I read this the other day and it just summed up exactly how I've used a to-do list in the past and how it never worked. See if this sounds like you too. Waking up, getting ready for work, and surveying your to-do list. Sounds ideal, right? Well, it's not. Often when people do this, they bypass important or complicated tasks in favor of what's easier to do or more urgent. So what happens next? Well, by ignoring complex tasks, you're ultimately setting yourself up for failure and disappointment. And what's worse, you're destroying your self-image. Yes, I think, I think so many of us can relate to this. It's reinforcing the self-image of someone who doesn't do what they say they're going to do. And that's horrible. We know that behavior change requires identity change. And so when you reinforce this bad identity as someone who doesn't do what they say they're going to, you're reinforcing the wrong identity. Essentially, this means you get caught up in a vicious cycle of not doing what you're supposed to do, supposed to do, uh, and then feeling bad about it. Doesn't this just so accurately sum up our experience with to-do lists? And so today, let's talk about how we're using to-do lists all wrong and how we can actually set ourselves up for success so we can have the identity of someone who gets stuff done and feels really good about it at the end of the day. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom and we have four kids ages six through 11. And it's fall, uh, we're actually starting homeschooling today. Uh, it's our second year, it's, Anyways, I've said I'm not qualified to talk about homeschooling yet, but I do love talking about productivity and time management and to-do lists because there are a few small changes that I made a handful of years ago that have completely transformed how I use and make to-do lists, but more importantly, how productive I am even on days when I don't feel like it, when I'm tired, I don't wanna do anything, it still works on those days too. And this is part of our Mega Motivation collaboration for September, so that means there are 20 other friends sharing their top time management tips as well. I'll put that playlist link down below. And so let's talk about why our to-do lists aren't working. And so like I said, if there's more than seven things, our brain just kind of shuts down and we've all experienced that. And so we need to make shorter to-do lists. What's the magic number? Three. Every, almost every time management person that I've listened to, uh, from Mel Robbins to Michael Hyatt to even Joshua Becker says, have no more than three things, three things on your to-do list on any given day. And what's great about the number three is that if I wake up in the morning, I didn't sleep well last night, I don't have a lot of energy, usually three items still doesn't feel overwhelming or overly intimidating to me. But most of us have way more than three on our list of things to do, right? So how do I choose those three? Well, that's where it comes down to prioritizing. So again, looking at my list and saying, whoa, everything on there is not equal in importance to my life. And so I've talked before about the book, Eat That Frog. I've referenced frog projects and sometimes people are like, what are you talking about? And so in the book, Eat That Frog, the author talks about how if you had on your task list or your to-do list for today that you had to eat a frog, you would wanna do that first thing in the morning so that it's not hanging over your head all day. And so as we look at our to-do list, we need to be able to pull out and prioritize those things that have the likelihood to hang over our head, that cause us stress when they're incomplete, that have bearing on our financial well being, on other important aspects. Like, if I don't order groceries today, the kids might grumble because they don't have cereal in the morning. But if I don't get my taxes to the accountant by the deadline, there's financial ramifications. I might be more likely to get audited. I don't know. I'm just, but they're not at all equal, right? But if I write them on a list, they look like they're equal in the impact that they have on my life, but they're nowhere near the same. And so we need to be able to prioritize the things on our list. And I saw this quote on Instagram the other day and I thought it was so good. It said, I think we underestimate how amazing it feels to get things done. And that's what I love about using this highly simplified to-do list where we're just focusing on three things. When we can get these three things done right away in the morning, it really changes not only how we see ourselves, but how we approach the rest of the day and the momentum and the energy that we have towards it. Okay, so we've pulled out our three high priority items. What do we do with the rest of the things that need to be on our list so we don't forget? And that's where I propose having a separate brain dump section, like 
a master to-do list that's broken down by the different roles that, that we play. So I actually made a free printable of this just for you to see. You could print it out and use it or you can take any planner really and use it this way. So what I've done is for each day of the week, there's spots for my three items, no more than three items on my task list. But then on separate pages, I have the brain dump section or our master to-do list. And following in line with the Franklin Covey, and I think Michael Hyatt talks about this too, but we want to break up our brain dump into the different roles that we play or the different hats that we wear. They talk about like the different hats, like what are the different characters I play throughout the day? There's household things, if I work or volunteer, uh, maybe things for my kids. So the brain dump sheets are divided up into different sections so you can categorize as you're dumping because again, we still don't want these lists to ne necessarily get too long. So by breaking them up into different categories, it helps to keep them a little bit shorter. Again, just so we're not overwhelming our brain. But for any of us that uh, start to feel anxious, that just feel like we have so much going on in our mind and we need to find a way to get it out, you probably already know that brain dumping is a great tactic for that. And it helps us to feel then like, I'm not gonna forget anything. So what you'll see here on this printable, and again, you can use any planner like this, is I have the spots um, at the very top to put your three tasks for the day. And then the rest of this area, it's kind of, you can use it like kind of like a bullet journal where you can kind of like rough out your day, what's going on, uh, jot notes, other appointments, anything like that. And then down at the bottom, I have thinking ahead. So the things I hope to accomplish this week, I'll put down here, but otherwise the rest of it all goes on these brain dump sheets and our, our the color wasn't working on our printer so it's not quite as pretty <laughs> and so then what i do when i go to plan out my day so it's morning i have my cup of coffee yeah, i'm going to decide my three things for today then i can reference those brain dump sheets and be like okay what is the most important things that i need to get done today and pull them in the other thing that's great about the brain dump is that if I get my three things done, then I can look at those brain dump sheets and say, okay, what else could I get done? And what I found for myself, like I, like I said, I really try to do my frog projects or those less savory tasks first thing in the morning. And then by afternoon, I'm like, okay, let's order groceries. Let's process the Amazon return. So then I do the things that make a smaller impact on life, but still need to get done. They're still important. And then I can check off some of those things throughout the day as well. But okay, so I know many of us are like, this sounds great, but honestly, the thought of getting up and first thing in the morning, tackling the hardest things feels kind of daunting. Like a lot of us have this idea like, well, I like to do easy things on my task list first. It kind of warms me up for the day, right? The problem is, is often we do the easy stuff and we never get to the hard stuff. <laughs> so that's where, if we can make this switch, it can drastically improve our quality of life and like we talked about at the beginning, how we feel about ourselves. But okay, so that's hard though. And so one tactic to make eating these frogs first thing in the morning a little bit easier is to also write down how much time we expect that it's gonna take. So a few years ago when we were still selling real estate full time, Tom and I are out, I don't even remember what we were doing. We were out and about and we got a phone call um, from the gentleman that we worked closely with and he was like, hey, I just got a phone call. There's this property and the gal really wants to find out what it's worth so that she can get it listed. They're kind of in a hurry. Could you stop in and visit with her? And we were only like 10 minutes away. So we're like, oh yeah, we'll just swing in and visit with her. We'll get the details and, and send it back to him and, and he can go on about it, whatever. So we get down there, we visit it with her. We get all the details. I call him like, hey, we got the info. And he's like, would you have time to run the CMA, the competitive market analysis? Like just run the report so she can see compared to other things that have sold, what it's worth, right? I mean, if you're selling your house, you wanna, like, you wanna see other properties that had sold. And I was like, yep, sure, I can do that. And so this was a Friday afternoon, and I texted the gal and said, yep, I'll have it for you beginning of next week. And so what did I do? I put it on my to-do list. So then it's Monday morning, I'm like, oh, I need to do that CMA for Rachel so I can get it down to her. The problem was, as I, I remembered, I'm like, ah, it's, it was a acreage, it was like 51 acres, which isn't like a standard acreage. And then it was also a manufactured home. And so it just made it a little bit more complicated because then you need to make adjustments. And so those couple things made it just hard enough that I was like, I'll do it later. Okay, I'm gonna take care of these other things. It's gonna require a little more brain energy. I'll do it later. And then it's Wednesday and I'm like, I told her beginning of the week, 
this is like up against where beginning and then I'm like, I just don't have time today. I And so I kept pushing it off and now it's Friday afternoon and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna look like such a loser if I do not get this to her. And then something else came up. She emailed and was like, oh, hey, you know, I was expecting to hear back. And then you feel that dread when you see her name pop into your email inbox and you're like, uh, and so I'm like, send a quick email. I'm like, I'm just headed out the door now, but I will finish it up, you know, when I get back home. And so now it's hanging over my head into the following weekend. So seven, nine days, I have been putting this off. And when I finally sat down on Sunday afternoon to do it, do you know how long it took? 30 minutes, 30 minutes. And so I put this task off all week, had it hanging over my head. Every time my, my email popped up, I'm like, oh, that's gonna be Rachel wondering where her CMA is. And so for a full week, it hung over my head. It caused me stress and anxiety. And it took 30 minutes once I actually sat down and did it. And so that has always stuck with me. Even this morning, I like asked Tom, I'm like, hey, did you follow up with our accountant about that thing? And, and he's like, no, I need to email her. And then he finally, like I kind of cornered him at the table with his computer. I'm like, will you please send that email? How long did that email take to send? Three minutes? And he had been putting it off for multiple days, had been hanging over his head. And so I love this tactic of assigning how long you think it's gonna take to the task, because often that helps us to keep in, it into perspective, how long it's gonna actually take, how much of our, our precious energy it's actually gonna take. One other tactic that I think is so good, and they talk about this in the book, Eat That Frog, is to imagine how good it's gonna feel to have it done. Even if that Monday morning when I was putting off that CMA, if I would've thought, I, I don't wanna do this because I feel like it's gonna be difficult, it's not gonna be straightforward. If I would've just thought to myself, but you know what? If I had this done by lunchtime or even my morning coffee break when I make my second cup of coffee for the day, it would feel so good to just have it sent off to her and not hanging over my head anymore. And I, I feel like if I could have imagined that too, it would have propelled me through the uncomfortableness of actually doing it. And so I would love to know, are there any tasks, as we talk about this, are there any tasks that, tasks that have been hanging over your head that you could complete in an hour or less. I know sometimes too, emails can be a big thing that, oh, I didn't respond right away and now I feel so rude that I haven't responded or a phone call that needs to get returned. I know we all, none of us like making phone calls anymore, right? I hear that one so often. Oh, it's this phone call I need to make. But a while back, uh, Tom and I went to a real estate seminar thing, you know, to help you sell more real estate. And the gal was talking about how, like if you're in any kind of sales, I mean, you have to, be in constant contact with the people around you and work your network basically, right? And so one of the exercises is like, write down everybody you know. And she said, I know what you're thinking. There's people on that list that you could not just call right now to see if, if they have any interest in, in, in doing something real estate related with you because you forgot to call them back, you missed an important date, you never emailed them back. And so what she said was, she said, just acknowledge it. Call them or email them and say, you know what? I feel like a really big loser. You had called me six months ago and I never returned your call and I've been thinking about that since and I'm so sorry that I did that. And if we'll just call it out, maybe it's an email you haven't sent in a timely manner and just say, you know, I am so sorry. This It was so rude of me that I never got back to you and I just wanted to let you know that I'm really sorry that that happened. And so often by just acknowledging that, then we can get it off of our list, have it not hanging over our head anymore. And I think that's the biggest thing is that these things that we don't do, not only does it deteriorate how we think about ourselves and make us feel bad about ourselves and again, reinforce this identity that we're someone who doesn't do what we're saying we're gonna do, I feel like it deteriorates our quality of life to constantly have these things hanging over our head that we need to do, that we should do, that why didn't I do that? So by learning to make these really short to-do lists, by prioritizing the items that have to get done, that make the biggest impact, it is amazing how it rebuilds our confidence in ourselves and it energizes ourselves. And then one other thing you'll notice with this little printable that I made is that I actually have a separate habit tracker. So if we wanna start a new habit, sometimes it kind of gets lost in our to-do list, but I think having a separate sheet where we can keep track of how many days in a row we do it is much more effective. Like it's really helpful to see our progress. And I, I need to mention too, our Take Your House Back course is open. And what I found is that as I've reduced the inventory in our house, as we've decluttered and gotten rid of stuff, 
all of this, the time management, the prioritizing my to-do list, everything has gotten so much easier. And what made me think of it was uh, Cass in one of our uh, recent Facebook Lives where we just answer questions and we talk about things that are working, not working. She mentioned that if we wanna start the habit of doing the dishes every day, which Dana talks all about and she swears by, but sometimes depending on what kind of season we're in, that feels a little daunting. And so Cass said, instead just make the habit of running a sink full of dishwater every day. You don't have to do the dishes. All you have to do is run the water. And I thought that was so good. And we all know this, right? If we take bigger tasks and we break them down, that it becomes more doable. And so if you need any help getting your house under control, if you need any accountability, extra support, we would love to provide that for you. We're doing an all day declutter coming up on Saturday, September 18th. It'd be really fun if you could join in. Replay is available if you can't join us live on that day. But the testimonies coming out of it were so good and everyone just said, like there was just like this energy about the day and there was so much progress made people that had felt like they had no motivation for decluttering got motivated and it carried into the weeks following too. So it was, it was kind of magical. <laughs> so I'm going to put the details for that down below. And so I wanted to answer just a couple questions that I've gotten recently about time management. So here's a question from Alyssa. She said, I hear so much about block scheduling and I feel like, especially as a mom, that this is something that I should be doing. However, I haven't been able to get it to work for me. Our days are often unpredictable. And so, I love this question because for a while I was beating myself up that I couldn't make block scheduling work for me either. And so I think there are people that it works so well for and it just lines up with how they're wired and the stage that their family is in and, and different things. For me, I, I, I never got it to work well. I just felt like as soon as I like was like, okay, I'm on track with my blocks. And then it was like the school nurse would call and be like, can you come pick Maggie up from school, right? Or like my grocery delivery would come without the one thing that I really needed to make supper and then I'm running to the store and it, it's all off. And so I think it's so important to just figure out what works for us. And I think especially if block scheduling hasn't worked for you, trying this out, making the really short to-do list and then having a separate brain dump, it might be worth a try to see if that works for you. Beth asked, do you have a favorite planner that you use? No, I feel like it's more about the principle of having a short to-do list and prioritizing than about any given planner. And so what I love about this system we're talking about today is you can make any planner work for it. You can get a generic one, you could do it in a notebook and just write out your top three things for the day. And so in the printable I made, I have the spots for the top three and then I just made the rest. I like to kind of jot out how the day is gonna flow if I have any appointments or other things. So there's just kind of a grid on it where you can write out notes, you can make out blocks or anything for how it's helpful for you to kind of plan out what your day looks like. But again, there's no magic planner, right? It's just being able to find a system that works for us that we can stick with. And it's okay if we've tried stuff in the past or even spent a lot of money on planners that haven't worked, it's okay. But do keep trying to figure out a system that works for you because it's too important to give up on. All right, well, I think that's everything I wanted to say. I'll put a link to those free printables down below, but again, you don't need them. If it's helpful, I'm, I'm really glad for that. But again, I think we can make any planner function like this. And if you have any top tips, will you leave those down below? Because it's always so fun to read through the comments and see other people's ideas as well. All right, I love you. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon.